a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Don Bradman Sir Donald George Bradman, AC, often referred to as the Don, was an Australian international cricketer, widely acknowledged as the greatest batsman of all time. Bradman's career test batting average of 99.94 has been cited as the greatest achievement by any sportsman in any major sport. The story that the young Bradman practiced alone with a cricket stump and a golf ball is part of Australian folklore. Bradman's meteoric rise from bush cricket to the Australian test team took just over two years. Before his 22nd birthday, he had set many records for top scoring some of which still stand, and became Australia's sporting idol at the height of the Great Depression. During a 20-year playing career, Bradman consistently scored at a level that made him, in the words of former Australia captain Bill Woodfull, were three batsmen to Australia. A controversial set of tactics, known as bodyline, was specifically devised by the England team to curb his scoring. As a captain, and administrator, Bradman was committed to attacking, entertaining cricket. He drew spectators in record numbers. He hated the constant adulation, however, and it affected how he dealt with others. The focus of attention on his individual performances strained relationships with some teammates, administrators and journalists, who thought him aloof and wary. Following an enforced hiatus due to the Second World War, he made a dramatic comeback, captaining an Australian team known as the Invincibles, on a record-breaking unbeaten tour of England. A complex, highly driven man, not given to close personal relationships. Bradman retained a preeminent position in the game by acting as an administrator, selector and writer for three decades following his retirement, even after he became reclusive in his declining years. His opinion was highly sought, and his status as a national icon was still recognized. Almost 50 years after his retirement as a test player, in 1997, Prime Minister John Howard of Australia called him the greatest living Australian. Bradman's image has appeared on postage stamps and coins, and a museum dedicated to his life was opened while he was still living. On the centenary of his birth, the 27th of August 2008, the Royal Australian Mint issued a $5 commemorative gold coin with Bradman's image. In 2009, he was inducted into the ICC Cricket Hall of Fame. Early Years Donald George Bradman was the youngest son of George and Emily Bradman, and was born on 27 August 1908 at Cootamundra, New South Wales. He had a brother, Victor, and three sisters, Eilat, Lillian, and Elizabeth May. Bradman was of English heritage on both sides of his family. His grandfather Charles Andrew Bradman left with Asfield, England for Australia. When Bradman played at Cambridge in 1930 as a 21-year-old on his first tour of England, he took the opportunity to trace his forebears in the region. Also, one of his great-grandfathers was one of the first Italians to migrate to Australia in 1826. Bradman's parents lived in the hamlet of Yo-Yo, near Stock and Bingle. His mother Emily gave birth to him at the Kutamundra home of Granny Schultz, a midwife. That house is now the Bradman Birthplace Museum. Emily had hailed from Mittagong in the NSW Southern Highlands, and in 1911, when Don Bradman was about two and a half years old, his parents decided to relocate to Bowroll, close to Mittagong to be closer to Emily's family and friends, as life at Yo-Yo was proving difficult. Bradman practiced batting incessantly during his youth. He invented his own solo cricket game, using a cricket stump for a bat, and a golf ball. A water tank, mounted on a curved brick stand, stood on a paved area behind the family home. When hit into the curved brick facing of the stand, the ball rebounded at high speed and varying angles, and Bradman would attempt to hit it again. This form of practice developed his timing and reactions to a high degree. In more formal cricket, he hit his first century at the age of 12. With an undefeated 115 playing for Barrel Public School against Mittagong High School. Bush Cricketer During the 1920-21 season, Bradman acted as scorer for the local Barrel team captained by his uncle George Watman. In October 1920, 
he filled in when the team was one man short, scoring 37 and 29 on debut. During a season, Bradman's father took him to the Sydney cricket ground to watch the fifth Ashes Test match. On that day, Bradman formed an ambition. I shall never be satisfied, he told his father. Until I play on this ground. Bradman left school in 1922 and went to work for a local real estate agent who encouraged his sporting pursuits by giving him time off when necessary. He gave up cricket in favour of tennis for two years, but resumed playing cricket in 1925-26. Bradman became a regular selection for the Barrel team. Several outstanding performances earned him the attention of the Sydney Daily Press. Competing on matting over concrete pitches, Bowerall played other rural towns in the Berrima district competition, against Wingalow. A team that included the future test bowler Bill O'Reilly, Bradman made 234, in the competition final against Moss Vale, which extended over five consecutive Saturdays, Bradman scored 320 not out. During the following Australian winter, an ageing Australian team lost the Ashes in England, and a number of test players retired. The New South Wales Cricket Association began a hunt for new talent. Mindful of Bradman's big scores for bow roll, the association wrote to him, requesting his attendance at a practice session in Sydney. He was subsequently chosen for the Country Week tournaments at both cricket and tennis. To be played during separate weeks, his boss presented him with an ultimatum. He could have only one week away from work, and therefore had to choose between the two sports. He chose cricket. Bradman's performances during Country Week resulted in an invitation to play grade cricket in Sydney for St George in the 1926-27 season. He scored 110 on his debut, making his first century on a turf wicket. On 1 January 1927, he turned out for the NSW second team. For the remainder of the season, Bradman travelled the 130 kilometres from Bowroll to Sydney every Saturday to play for St George. First Class Debut The next season continued the rapid rise of the boy from Bowroll. Selected to replace the unfit Archie Jackson in the NSW team, Bradman made his first class debut at the Adelaide Oval, aged 19. He secured the achievement of 100 on debut with an innings of 118 featuring what soon became his trademarks, fast footwork, calm confidence and rapid scoring. In the final match of the season, he made his first century at the SCG, against the Sheffield Shield champions Victoria. Despite his potential, Bradman was not chosen for the Australian second team to tour New Zealand. Bradman decided that his chances for test selection would be improved by moving to Sydney for the 1928-29 season, when England were to tour in defence of the Ashes. Initially, he continued working in real estate, but later took a promotions job with the sporting goods retailer McSimmons Limited in the first match of the Sheffield Shield season. He scored a century in each innings against Queensland. He followed this with scores of 87 and 132 not out against the England touring team, and was rewarded with selection for the first test to be played at Brisbane. Test career Playing in only his 10th first-class match, Bradman, nicknamed Braddles by his teammates, found his initial test a harsh learning experience. Caught on a sticky wicket, Australia were all out for 66 in the second innings and lost by 675 runs. Following scores of 18 and 1, the selectors dropped Bradman to 12th man for the second test. An injury to Bill Ponsford early in the match required Bradman to field a substitute while England amassed 636, following their 863 runs in the first test. R.S. Dick Whittington wrote. He had scored only 19 himself and these experiences appear to have provided him with food for thought. Recalled for the third test at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Bradman scored 79 and 112 to become the youngest player to make a test century, although the match was still lost. Another loss followed in the fourth test. Bradman reached 58 in the second innings and appeared set to guide the team to victory when he was run out. It was to be the only run out of his test career. The losing margin was just 12 runs. The improving Australians did manage to win the fifth and final test. 
Bradman top scored with 123 in the first innings, and was at the wicket in the second innings when his captain Jack Ryder hit the winning runs. Bradman completed the season with 1,690 first-class runs, averaging 93.88. And his first multiple century in a Sheffield Shield match, 340 not out against Victoria, set a new ground record for the SCG. Bradman averaged 113.28 in 1929-30, in a trial match to select the team that would tour England. He was last man out in the first innings for 124. As his team followed on, the skipper Bill Woodfull asked Bradman to keep the pads on and open the second innings. By the end of play, he was 205 not out, on his way to 225. Against Queensland at the SCG, Bradman set a then world record for first class cricket by scoring 452 not out. He made his runs in only 415 minutes. Not long after the feat, he recalled, although he was an obvious selection to tour England, Bradman's unorthodox style raised doubts that he could succeed on the slower English pitches. Percy Fender wrote, the encomiums were not confined to his batting gifts, nor did the criticism extend to his character. Australia has unearthed a champion, said former Australian Test great Clem Hill, self-taught, with natural ability, but most important of all, with his heart in the right place. Selector Dick Jones weighed in with the observation that it was, good to watch him talking to an old player, listening attentively to everything that is said and then replying with a modest thank you. 1930 Tour of England England were favourites to win the 1930 Ashes series, and if the Australians were to exceed expectations, their young batsmen, Bradman and Jackson, needed to prosper. With his elegant batting technique, Jackson appeared the brighter prospect of the pair. However, Bradman began the tour with 236 at Worcester and went on to score 1,000 first-class runs by the end of May, the fifth player to achieve this rare feat. In his first test appearance in England, Bradman hit 131 in the second innings, but England won the match. His batting reached a new level in the second test at Lords where he scored 254 as Australia won, and levelled the series. Later in life, Bradman rated this the best innings of his career as, practically without exception every ball went where it was intended to go. Wisden noted his fast footwork, and how he hit the ball, all round the wicket with power and accuracy, as well as faultless concentration in keeping the ball on the ground. In terms of runs scored, this performance was soon surpassed. In the third test, at Headingley, Bradman scored a century before lunch on the 11th of July, the first day of the test match to equal the performances of Victor Trumper and Charlie McCartney. In the afternoon, Bradman added another century between lunch and tea, before finishing the day on 309 not out. He remains the only test player to pass 300 in one day's play. His eventual score of 334 was a world record, exceeding the previous mark of 325 by Andy Sandham. Bradman dominated the Australian innings. The second highest tally was 77 by Alan Kippax. Businessman Arthur Whitelaw later presented Bradman with a cheque for £1,000 in appreciation of his achievement. The match ended in anti-climax as poor weather prevented a result, as it also did in the fourth test. In the deciding test at the Oval, England made 405. During an innings stretching over three days due to intermittent rain, Bradman made yet another multiple century, this time 232 which helped give Australia a big lead of 290 runs, in a crucial partnership with Archie Jackson. Bradman battled through a difficult session when England fast bowler Harold Larwood bowled short on a pitch enlivened by the rain. Wisden gave this period of play only a passing mention, a number of English players and commentators noted Bradman's discomfort in playing the short, rising delivery. The revelation came too late for this particular match, but was to have immense significance in the next Ashes series. Australia won the match by an innings and regained the Ashes. The victory made an impact in Australia, with the economy sliding toward depression and unemployment rapidly rising. The country found solace in sporting triumph.
The story of a self-taught 22-year-old from the bush who set a series of records against the old rival made Bradman a national hero. The statistics Bradman achieved on the tour and in the test matches in particular, broke records for the day and some have stood the test of time. In all, Bradman scored 974 runs at an average of 139.14 during the test series, with four centuries, including two double hundreds and a triple. As of 2018, no one has matched or exceeded 974 runs or three double centuries in one test series. The record of 974 runs exceeds the second best performance by 69 runs and was achieved in two fewer innings. Bradman's first class tally, 2,960 runs, was another enduring record, the most by any overseas batsman on a tour of England. On the tour, the dynamic nature of Bradman's batting contrasted sharply with his quiet, solitary off-field demeanor. He was described as aloof from his teammates and he did not offer to buy them a round of drinks, let alone share the money given to him by Whitelaw. Bradman spent a lot of his free time alone, writing, as he had sold the rights to a book. On his return to Australia, Bradman was surprised by the intensity of his reception. He became a reluctant hero. Mick Simmons wanted to cash in on their employees' newly won fame. They asked Bradman to leave his teammates and attend official receptions they organised in Adelaide, Melbourne, Goulburn, his hometown Barrow and Sydney, where he received a brand new custom-built Chevrolet. At each stop, Bradman received a level of adulation that embarrassed him. This focus on individual accomplishment in a team game permanently damaged relationships with his contemporaries. Commenting on Australia's victory, the team's vice-captain Vic Richardson said, We could have played any team without Bradman, but we could not have played the blind school without Clary Grimmett. A modest Bradman can be heard in a 1930 recording saying, I have always endeavoured to do my best for the side, and the few centuries that have come my way have been achieved in the hope of winning matches. My one idea when going into bat was to make runs for Australia. Reluctant Hero In 1930-31, against the first West Indian side to visit Australia, Bradman's scoring was more sedate than in England, although he did make 223 and 297 minutes in the third test at Brisbane, and 152 and 154 minutes in the following test at Melbourne. However, he scored quickly in a very successful sequence of innings against the South Africans in the Australian summer of 1931-32, for NSW against the tourists. He made 30, 135 and 219. In the test matches, he scored, 2 and. His 299 not out in the fourth test, at Adelaide, set a new record for the highest score in a test in Australia. Australia won nine of the ten tests played over the two series. At this point, Bradman had played 15 test matches since the beginning of 1930, scoring 2,227 runs at an average of 131. He had played 18 innings, scoring 10 centuries, six of which had extended beyond 200. His overall scoring rate was 42 runs per hour, with 856 scored in boundaries. Significantly, he had not hit a six, which typified Bradman's attitude, if he hit the ball along the ground, then it could not be caught. During this phase of his career, his youth and natural fitness allowed him to adopt a machine-like approach to batting. The South African fast bowler Sandy Bell described bowling to him as heartbreaking, with his sort of cynical grin, which rather reminds one of the Sphinx. He never seems to perspire. Between these two seasons, Bradman seriously contemplated playing professional cricket in England with the Lancashire League club Accrington, a move that, according to the rules of the day, would have ended his test career. A consortium of three Sydney businesses offered an alternative. They devised a two-year contract whereby Bradman wrote for Associated Newspapers, broadcast on Radio 2 UA and promoted the menswear retailing chain F.J. Palmer and Son. However, the contract increased Bradman's dependence on his public profile, making it more difficult to maintain the privacy that he ardently desired. 
Bradman's chaotic wedding to Jesse Menzies in April 1932 epitomized these new and unwelcome intrusions into his private life. The church was under siege all throughout the day. Uninvited guests stood on chairs and pews to get a better view. Police erected barriers that were broken down and many of those invited could not get a seat. Just weeks later, Bradman joined a private team organized by Arthur Maley to tour the United States and Canada. He traveled with his wife, and the couple treated the trip as a honeymoon, playing 51 games in 75 days. Bradman scored 3,779 runs at 102.1, with 18 centuries. Although the standard of play was not high, the effects of the amount of cricket Bradman had played in the three previous years, together with the strains of his celebrity status, began to show on his return home. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?